Hey there, SolarLoon here, and this is a little devlog video showing what I've been up to in the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I've been working on my own projects, you know, um, sprites, music, you know, the, the usual stuff. Um, trying to get more into other things, but uh, yeah, I've been working on stuff. And mainly, also, I've been working on this game engine. The game engine I use, the main engine I use, pretty much only engine I use, is BDX currently. Um, in case you didn't know, BDX is a engine that stands in between Blender and LibGDX, the Java-based um, game engine, or the, I'm sorry, the Java-based uh, framework. Um, and it allows you basically to export data from Blender to be imported into, into LibGDX, and it also provides an API for you to edit those objects in um, in the engine. So it's, it's kind of like, it turns Blender into a game engine of sorts. Uh, so it's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, this is basically I improved the lighting over the past release um, and It was committed to master so I just wanted to help go ahead and show kind of the the difference or the the new little couple features um, So this is a demo I made just to kind of test it out uh, space spawns lights Q deletes lights uh, Left and right change how fast the lights spin around the center Which is the white cube and up and down change how fast they twirl on their own um, and down and, and the other direction, of course, uh, you know, just does those things, but in reverse. So overall, it's pretty good. Uh, Z makes things invisible. Space spawns new, uh, lights, like I said. So it's a good little demo. Um, this isn't anything, uh, impressive, you know, that impressive or, or in incredible. I'll leave this, I guess, over here for a second. Um, currently the engine supports 128 lights. Once you exceed that. LibGDX basically tries to kind of fudge around um, like how it's all rendered like it kind of takes into account the other lights once you break that that limit but it doesn't render them so it's like it, it kind of like tries to take to, kind of tries to use them anyway even though they're not um, there or it doesn't render it so it used to be that the light limit was five just like that's the default but now the point light limit is 128 so that's a nice little um, addition uh, now specular color is supported and exported so you know you can see the the specular co color showing up um, as the lights kind of whiz by this is still ver per vertex uh, I'm sorry per vertex lighting it's not a uh, per fragment I would like to work on per pixel lighting I think that's what I'm going to work on next um, alongside some other features but that's basically I think what I'm what I'm gonna look into next is uh, getting some per, per pixel lighting in there so I, you don't have to see those triangles um, otherwise, I mean, there's so much about this engine I have yet to talk about because I just have yet to make a video about it. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot. <laughs> um, so the specular color is now supported, so you can go ahead and just set it here and then press P and it'll update correctly. Um, that's cool. There's a lot of other things that are still supported or already supported, like diffuse color being exported, uh, emit values being exported, um, shadelessness is supported. Uh, backface culling, alpha uh, transparency, alpha blend. I don't think any of this is supported just because we don't need it. Um, other than opaque, which is the default, and additive blending, you can just set the blending to be mode for the object to be different. Um, we support a lot of the stuff in the physics panel, like dynamic, uh, rigid body, static. Um, I think all of the collision bounds. I'm not sure. I feel like we might have them all, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that on a video. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that on a video. Um, collision groups and masks are working uh, thanks to the con contributions of the community of, of uh, other people who have added these things. Um, Invisible, of course, is working. Um, you know, lots, lots of other stuff. Uh, I, I can't go into everything. It, it would just simply take too long. I, I can't talk about all, it all right now. Um, but yeah, it, that's the kind of the cool thing about about uh, where is it? Okay, cool. That's kind of the cool thing about BDX. You change all this stuff, you press P, it updates, and, and you, it runs the game, and it's all in there. So you don't have to worry about exporting the export process, and why is my mesh so small? Why is my object so big? And, you know, no, it's it's working on the same constraints that Blender, the game engine, worked on, which is, um, you know, a, a Blender unit is a meter, if I recall. Um, so, you know, you, you, the physics engine is simulated in accord with that, so there's nothing too ab absurd or, you know, hard to comprehend about that um or or you know difficult to to remember you know it's pretty pretty easy you, you can see how everything's physically simulated um 
you know, there's a lot of stuff that's in here. The profiler works. Uh, the um, we have a physics pro visualization as well, well that works. Um, there, there's just a, there's a ton of stuff in here that I can't even begin to kind of communicate over a single video. So I, I'm not even going to try. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to check it out, please feel free. Uh, we could always use the feedback and information gained from people checking out the engine, telling us if something's not documented, not documented well enough. Um, you know, there's there's the process itself is fairly simple. It, you, you put an object in, in Blender and then you can make a Java file either in Blender or externally in the source directory, SRC. Um, you know, SRC, that's how you spell source. <laughs> that's how you, the, the folder's named in, in your project folder. And then you just go in there and put in the, the name of the object with .java at the end, or you can customize it if you don't want to use that name. And you, you're basically off and running. You extend the game object and you, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. It's really easy to use. There's a ton of stuff that's in here that's not, um, that's not, uh, you know, I, I can't talk about. There's, um, it, like I said, in a single video, mesh animation has been supported. Uh, not ar armature animation, but mesh replacement animation, which is not a replacement for armature animation, but it's just a different way to, to animate things that is very useful as well. Um, you know, there, there's just so much. I, I can't even begin to, to explain it all. Uh, but it's just, yeah, we, we could definitely use some people. If you want to check it out, use it. You know, that's why I use for... Um, Airgrift, that's what I used for Takairo. Uh, that's what I used for, that's, this is my main engine, it's working really well. Um, if I don't, you know, if I find something that I need or want, I can go ahead and make it, you know, improve the engine and add it to the engine, and that, that's great. It's a great feeling to work on the engine and improve it. Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to, to try it. Uh, the code base is really simple, it's easy to use. Maybe I'll, I'll go over the code base in the video, um, kind of showing the how simple it is and, and you know, if there's a problem, it's easy to find. It's easy to figure out where the, the problem might lie and get it fixed. You know, if a bug arises, you can put it on the issue um, tracker tracker on, on GitHub or or talk about how you know how to make something or how to get something working in, in your the subreddit, uh, RBDX, you know. It's just it's easy. <laughs> it's, it's easy to use and it's easy to, to kind of understand how things work. Um, especially if you're familiar with the Blender game engine, it, it kind of shares a couple of, uh, uh, quite a few actually, con conventions and, and similarities with it. That's why we're able to use the, the GUI from Blender. Is a lot of the stuff is from the Blender game engine that we can just, uh, or is from the Blender game engine, and we just use it for BDX as well um, to grab the data from for, from BDX, or for BDX. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff, lots of nice things in here. Um, I feel like there's something else I wanted to say, but oh, well, it's portable. You know, it's it's based on Java, so you export a jar, jar file, and that's your executable if you want it, you know, to, to be where people can just double click it and have it open. I think Minecraft is pretty pretty similar. I think they added actually an executable recently in the past maybe few months. They added an actual like .exe for Windows that you can use, and it'll download the Minecraft .jar. <laughs> but I think like that's kind of the what it is. Is it's it's you know, just a dot jar. That's why it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Is because it's a cross-platform implemented um, executable. You know, it's a jar executable. But yeah, it's portable. It's easy to, to use, easy to develop with. But yeah, if you want to use it, please let us know. It's I I really like it because it's simple. It's it's limiting, but not in in a bad way. It's not limiting where it's like, oh, I can't make the AAA title I always wanted to make. It's limiting where it's like, you know, you can. It's just enough to make the kind of games that I would want to make. And the kind of games that are good, <laughs> that, that look, you know, can look good and you know feel good. It houses my creativity. That's that's fine. That's what it needs to do. It doesn't need to, you know, do anything extra. It just needs to be good enough to let you know the developer develop his game. It, you know, it's not supposed to make a game for you. Um, you know, it it's something to be said that uh, this is basically functionally almost everything to make. Valkian and to make Gearend, you know those games are. They will be returned to <laughs> if I get my chance. Basically, once I once I kind of work on other things, or maybe I'll just start it up, start them up again. Because it's like, I, if I'm gonna you know stall on anything, <laughs> I'd rather stall on Valkian, you know, a tip number two, than just some random game that kind of gets people a little interested and then you know they drop off. You know, so I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to Valkian or Gearend soon, but. You know, it's something to be said that this 
engine is is pretty much functional and, uh, to make those games where you know 2d screen filters is there uh, input maps is there um, sprite animation is there you know obviously it's a 3d game world it's there um, it doesn't have per pixel lighting yet you know I'm looking into that I can I can implement that it's not really necessary what you know I can implement that it doesn't have uh, spotlights that was necessary for Falcon um, once you got the flashlight yeah once you got the flashlight I, I had it where the spotlight would actually show you know light up your path that's not there yet in in um, BDX but I can add it you know it can be added so it's just like there's no there's nothing that uh, I feel like I either couldn't add or that the engine just doesn't support yet I think it, it supports pretty much everything <laughs> it supports pretty much everything you know that I would need to make Valkyrie or Gearin. that is that's a real accomplishment so I hope Gorin is proud of himself for this because this is this is really a, a it's an incredible engine I, I I recommend it you know if you want to make something 3d you know really advanced this isn't the engine for that if you want to make you know the next I don't know nuclear throne the next you know um, you know even games like Bastion and stuff I Bastion might have been 3d if that was 3d I don't remember if it was 3d or just 2d sprites but if you want to make something you know the next Brit well, Brady, yeah, I guess if you programmed it correctly, because <laughs> like the time stretching stuff, it, it was pretty, you know, extreme. I'm sure they probably custom made that. Um, but you know, if you want to make the next whatever game that's impressive, not because it's visually impressive or technically impressive, rather, but because it's aesthetically impressive and it's programmed, you know, program programmatically and 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 gameplay wise, it's impressive. You know, this engine will house your ability. So, you know, basically, I, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about it and um just explain a little bit about it i guess you could say all right uh this is like my fourth attempt at this so hopefully i won't have to do this again <laughs> um thanks for watching and hopefully uh yeah if you're interested let us know and uh we'll definitely you know take your advice into consideration see about improving the engine or maybe you can even improve it yourself uh it's pretty, like i said code base is real simple real light real small um easy to to, to work on because it's just the stuff that makes the engine run it's none of the gui stuff from blender and it's none of the low-level stuff from libgdx so it's it's like just the stuff to make to make games with so that's that's great um so yeah if you're interested look into it and uh maybe we'll see you out there you know coating stuff for for bdx <laughs> all right well anyway uh thanks for watching i've been solar loon and uh yeah you have fun see ya